Hello, welcome. This is very simply a visual setup guide to using this cookie cutter tool to set up RimWorld modding projects. So uh, right here, I'm just on the, the GitHub page for this tool. Um, you can see right here, it, it has, so, so what I'm talking about here is the um, Visual Studio integration for this tool. You can perhaps more simply uh, use the command prompt to set it up if you have Git, Python, and then the cookie cutter package for Python installed. Uh, I'm not going to go over how those are installed. Um, so, in order to actually integrate this with the Visual Studio install, uh, well, firstly, you need these three things required programs up at the top. Um, once once we have those installed, you can go up to your Visual Studio installer. Um, and also note that this is for the most recent version of Visual Studio. Um, I'm using 2022. The guide right here in the on the GitHub page, um, right right about here. Uh, it says there should be an option to specifically enable this uh, imports um, files or projects from cookie cutter templates. Um, but I don't believe that that is actually present in the the latest one. But um, so 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 actually, in order to get the option that this this guide is based on right that file new from cookie cutter you need to make sure that you have this python package this python workload um, you need to make sure also that you have this data science and analytical applications workload um, i'm not sure if both of them are required but i have both of those set up and um, i can use the install without any trouble um, the only other thing you might need is the actual .NET desktop development uh, workload, which I would assume is just the C Sharp language itself. Um, so anyway, once you have those selected, just modify your install um, and then wait for it to go. This program is pretty heavy, so it might take a while. Um, but anyway, once you have this done uh, and we go into actually Visual Studio, uh, what what that kind of setup actually does is inside of our file new menu it adds this uh, from cookie cutter option which makes it very very easy to set up a remote project because what you have to do is type in remote and search for it and right you see this is the the same github as that page I was just looking at uh, you can click next with that selected um, which I think is, yeah, so so for some reason, I don't exactly know why. That always crashes my Visual Studio the first time I do it, but maybe, actually, maybe that isn't a crash, maybe it's it's, it's uh, being installed. Uh, but anyway, once once it's actually installed, you can just click Next, and it shouldn't crash. Um, and then, right, you have the path that you want to select. So the the guide suggests that the wiki guide for this this setup suggests that this be a folder inside of your mods folder inside of the the game's Steam install directory. So you know Steam apps common uh, RimWorld mods. Make a new folder in that. Select that. Uh, then you can name it. Set yourself as the author. Describe. Give it a description. And then I don't actually know what this option does. Um, but then you just click create and open and it'll open up the project. Um, so once you have that done, right, this right here is just a project that I have uh, made using the same process. I just added this, this code into the um, project mode CS file that was created in the source directory. Um, maybe a, an important thing to note uh, you do need to 
once the files have generated, you need to open the solution, double click that. Uh, you might have a pop-up telling you to up upgrade the, um, the framework version or something like that. I think uh, maybe just click yes for that, but once you have that done, you can come and double click on the properties on this right side. Uh, and maybe change the target framework to 472. That's that's what I've seen on the, the wiki anyways. Um, and also, I think you need to make sure that the output type is a class library. Because this is not, we're not making this any standalone applications. Okay, um, so then with that said, just taking a quick look at this basic code setup. This is just directly from the wiki. Um, oh, actually, uh, you'll you'll know if the setup is correct if you can type this using verse statement, and there will be no errors with it, um, because this is just a, a, a namespace provided by the uh, RimWorld itself. Um, so anyway, the wiki talks about having two ways to have the game load your mod. One of them is with this static class that I have right here. Um, it has the static constructor project mod, uh, and the way this works is right. Um, if you're familiar with static constructors, they they can only be called once to initialize a or to or when the uh, when a static class is loaded. So when this class is loaded, this constructor is called, and this annotation right here basically signals that we want this constructor to be loaded. We want this class to be loaded when the game loads. So the wiki says that this will execute just before the main menu is displayed. So uh, that brings us to this next option, right? Which I've labeled config because the wiki suggests that um, you'd want to inherit from the mod class, right? That's what I'm doing here. When you want to add configuration. So this, this kind of setup will fire much earlier in the process than the other one. Um, so I just have very simple uh, logging messages so that we can see when the mod is loaded both times. Um, now, one other important thing, if we want to actually get this the code to be recognized in the game, right? Because if I don't do anything now, uh, the, the mod will actually appear in the list but this code will not be executed, right? So it'll load anything that isn't code. Um, but so, so what we need to do to get it to take in this code also is to right click on a solution on the right and you wanna build solution. Um, and you can see in this output, right? It tells us that it's built the mod into a DLL, which is just our library file uh, into the assemblies directory. If I switch this back to, well, anyway, it, it puts in the, the assemblies directory of the uh, folder structure of our mod, a DLL that the game will then recognize. Um, so just in one moment, I'll show you the game with this loaded. Okay, so the game is just loaded. Uh, and if I open up the debug log, Right, so look, you can see this message right here, the inherited project mod class loaded, that's the um, message I put in the extension of mod. Uh, that appears in the log before the static message. All right, so you can see, um, right, so this, it, there's information in the, the output right here as to what's actually happening. Um, but the static one does fire later on. Um, uh, uh, also, this, uh, in order for that to show up, you should make sure also that the mod is actually in the active section of your list. Otherwise, it won't even uh, load. Um, right, so, so you can see it appears, and it is... Uh, the code is actually executed as expected. Okay, uh, that's all for this.
Goodbye.